to another installment of Metal Ed Central, the show where I take an honest look at the harder side of music and give it an honest rating. Well, by the time this video gets published, Valentine's Day will have come and gone, so it's only fitting that we celebrate this amorous time of year by examining a rage-filled album by Suicide Silence. Yes, it's Become the Hunter, which was released February 14th on Nuclear Blast. Now, these guys have been the repeated targets of those in the deathcore community who feel that they sold out because they utilized some clean vocals on their last album. Not going to jump on either side of that debate, but the facts are what they are. So, how the answer to that? Let's find out. I'm just going to go and get something out of the way right off the bat. This is an absolute slab of an album, okay? It's bursting at the seams with the chugging guitar work and matching rhythms typical of this subgenre. When you think of deathcore, the production and aura found on this album should be what pops into mind immediately. It's a rather great representation of everything that fans of it stand for. It's loud, there's zero melody, and it takes absolutely no prisoners as it burns its way through your CD player, or in my case, Spotify player. Another thing about this album is that it is angry. I don't think I've heard anger and venom pour forth from my speakers quite like this, and I've heard some pretty ticked off stuff before. Heck, I've even reviewed it for this channel. It's clear that when the online attacks on their music began, they immediately treated clean vocals as equivalent to hot lava, alright? There are no cleans on here. It's all growling and, as much as I hate using this phrase, cookie monster vocals. Squealing, screaming, and tortured crying a la Sana style are the emanations of choice here, and the band shows no mercy to the listener's ears. You might think that all of this is praise for the album. And you would be right on some levels. There are some good things on this album. Feel Alive and Love Me to Death have rather catchy hooks, and Skin Tight has an interesting little outro with a mildly cleaner guitar playing over the chugging underscore. There's also an underlying sort of semi-sense of musicianship on some of the softer parts that's interesting before the endless chugging begins anew. But here's the problem I have with this album, and it's pretty much the problem I have with deathcore in general. Every single song sounds exactly alike. It's all chug, 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 hook, 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 and then chug, chug, chug again. All of this with Hermita's absolutely ticked off vocal performance. Add the two together, and you get just another deathcore album. That's honestly what this is. It's fine if you're into that kind of thing, but unfortunately, I'm not, and this album did nothing to change my stance on the genre. Something I appreciated about Whitechapel's The Valley album from last year was that they did experiment with clean vocals. Suicide Silence and other deathcore bands need to do that. Having clean vocals on a deathcore release could bring a whole new atmosphere to things and perhaps draw in more people. Here, Hermita doesn't let up from his rough vocals even when they are completely inappropriate to the songwriting. For instance, Skin Tight has a rather nice little soft introduction, but then Hermita comes in and just screams over the emptiness. It sounds off. The listener doesn't need screams there, he needs to contemplate what the music itself is saying. That's just one of many examples where the vocals don't really match the music on this album. Treating clean vocals like hot lava might be trendy in the deathcore scene, but it murdered parts of this album. I'm gonna go ahead and give this album a 55 out of 100. It's just not my bag. Like I said, there were some decent moments here and there, but overall, it was difficult to get through, and this, this is not a mark against being a heavier band. I don't mind heavier music. I mean, I like death metal. So, but with this, it's just, I don't know, I guess the the chugging really puts me off. And, and again, the vocals on a lot of parts of this album just really don't match up to what the music is trying to to get over. The anger sizzles on this disc, but the music suffers for it. The repetitive nature of the songs and, again, the rather mediocre vocal performance just really hit the album hard. I don't recommend it to anyone outside of the deathcore fan base because that's really who this was made for. It was made to appease everybody who accused the band of selling out, and in doing so, they have alienated everyone else. Thank you so much for watching. Click like, and don't forget to subscribe for more Metalhead Central. Next week is a release that I am absolutely stoked to get to review. It's the man himself, the godfather of our genre, Ozzy Osbourne, and his new album, Ordinary Man. I'll be examining it, and I hope you'll join me. 
You've been watching Metalhead Central, where I give honest ratings to honest music, and I'll see y'all next time.